new intro so much love and appreciation to those of you who have been with me for the two-year period plus that i've been doing this um thank you for showing your uh love and support to the channel and to anybody else who is brand new to the platform and you would like to support the channel also you can do it by way of patreon anchor the clothing store and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below and again thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period i wouldn't be able to do what i do every single day without you he thought he and his wife were in grave danger the couple shared video of the shooting as seen from their doorbell camera it shows the trooper in plain clothes driving an unmarked pickup but the man says this story started well before the trooper showed up on his doorstep. And a word of caution here, some of the video in this story may be disturbing to some viewers. Here's Scott Gordon. And a, in two vehicles, two trucks came flying by us at a high rate of speed. Russell King was heading home from getting food with his wife, Myra, when he says he saw two pickups that appeared to be racing behind them. One exited the highway, the other ended up right in front of them. And I visibly see him look in his mirror, shake his head like this, and that's when he brake checked me. Brake checked, slammed on his brakes with King right behind. Yes, it was very deliberate. He says he thought it was road rage, and the other driver started to chase him, even onto this Walmart parking lot. And that's where I saw him giving me the finger. Concerned for his safety, King says he tried to speed away back into traffic but the other driver kept coming. And he was pushing a car over and he was going into oncoming traffic and made a bus swerve. King says he did notice some flashing lights in the grill of the pickup, but didn't think anything of it at the time. It didn't seem to be very, very official. I'd never seen a police vehicle that was a gray Chevrolet truck. The King say they thought they finally lost him, got home, backed into their garage, and immediately called 911. He just told me to just go inside the house, go into the, um, the closet, and talk to the 911 operator. A few minutes later, the same man in that same pickup pulled up in front of their house. King says he watched on his live camera system as the man pulled something out of the back. It appeared to be a gun. And then approached the house and knocked loudly. I, I've never been so scared in my life. I, I, I really felt as, as if he were there to harm my wife and I. And I yelled, please go away. We've called 911. Fort Worth police quickly arrived and took King and his wife into custody. It was then handcuffed in the back of a squad car. King says he was shocked to learn the truth. He told me, you've shot a state trooper. And my response was, how? The trooper, later identified as William Wallace, was a special agent assigned to criminal investigations and worked in plain clothes. There was no identification whatsoever. There was no vest. There was no badge. Just a brown shirt and jeans. The doorbell video shows Wallace shouted police when he knocked on the door. King says he never heard that. King was never arrested, but worried he would be any day. We were planning practically for me going to prison and what it would do to our lives. Then, about two weeks ago, a grand jury heard his case and declined to charge him with a single crime. The most relief I've ever felt in my entire life. The King spoke to us with their lawyer, Robert Hoosman, by their side. Now, they say, they just want to get on with their lives. Yes, I do want to forget about it, but every time someone asks me, I don't like, because it's, it's stuck in my head. I'm, I'm so confused. I, well, I wish it never would have happened. King has a clean criminal record. If he had only known it was a police officer in that pickup, he says he would have simply pulled over right away, avoiding the entire ordeal. We reached out to the Texas Department of Public Safety this morning, asking about the trooper's status and whether he's facing any discipline. This evening, DPS told us it's working on a response, but hasn't provided it yet. We'll let you know what they say when we get it. We also filed an open records request for a copy of the Texas Rangers investigation of the shooting. This is it. It's almost entirely blacked out. DPS claims the case is still under investigation, even after the grand jury declined to charge King with any crime. Now, for all intents and purposes, when you're able to watch the video, I'm pretty sure that everybody can agree. All you see is a truck. Um, you see a guy directly step out, brown shirt, and then he's wearing some blue jeans. Look like your average Joe, right? Directly from wherever. 
And then he proceeded to walk onto somebody's property of which he did not know. And he proceeded to look around the house and then he proceeded to knock on the door. Now, mind you, this is just after they, in a sense, uh, got into a or what they felt was a road rage incident. So their adrenaline is pretty much racing. They're pretty much excited and happy that they made it home. And they're like, you know what? We're safe. We're completely fine. Nothing happened to us. Uh, you know, no worse for the wear. Right. And then this truck comes up that they recognize. They see a guy step out. So in anybody's right mind, if you were just in a road rage incident and you see something like this take place, you're like, oh, flags, alarms, everything is basically going off at that moment in time. So he proceeded to basically defend his home and he had every single right to basically do so. Every single right. Like I said before, the grand jury directly had this 100 percent correct. Uh, you know, he deserves no type of time. Nothing should happen to him um, at all because nobody stated that this is who they were representing, whatever entity that they were representing. Uh, no type of badge or anything was basically shown. And on top of that, you were the 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 main person of the house. The husband of the house told them to get off the property, to please leave, go. And that person decided not to because they felt that they had the right to basically be there. And he responded because he's not only protecting himself, but he's also protecting his wife. But beyond that, what I will sit up there and state is that this is America. This is the you know, main thing that transpires every single time. So when you have black men that decide that they want to do the exact same thing, which you've had some black men do. They will get charged or better yet, backup will show up. You will see people raising all types of uh, service weapons and then they'll decide to try to either light up the house or they'll decide that, you know, they wouldn't really, you know, give a stance. They want to really show who is in control. Right. But that's clearly not what happened, because I think if I go back through the video mentally, I think I might have saw about two to three actual uh, cop cars out there. And I didn't really see anybody with any type of um, super duper, you know, police response. Right. And that was just right. A man, a human being. Right. Who was protecting his home. Right. Now, when I mean super duper response, I mean, such as normal responses that black men get the moment in time that a black man raises his voice or it seems like he might be posturing or acting aggressive that's when they want to call eight to nine other officers directly to the scene including the canine dog and they also want to make sure to have the tank on deck as well because they want to instill fear and they want to let people know who is in charge and who you're going to respect like i said before even something so simple as kids in high school you will have, you know, a slew of police basically show up and try to manhandle one child. But mind you, if these same cops, right, ended up having that exact same thing happen to their kids, you know, pretty much they'll be, you know, World War Three at that moment in time. But like I said before, there's a multitude of black men who have done this exact same thing, but they didn't come out. They didn't fare too well. They didn't fare too well at all. Because what people have to understand is that a lot of these laws and everything that um, has been implemented was never to um, automatically fit for us. Because at the end of the day, we're still not even seen as human beings. So, yeah, this is a OK. This is a great story. You know, the good guy won. Right. Proved his point. The grand jury directly believed him and he's not facing any any other legal action. But like I said before, when it comes to black men in America, you pretty much can't do anything. You can barely even tie your shoes without potentially having the police directly on you asking you, what are you doing? You're looking mighty suspicious. Who ties their shoes like that? Who overlaces like that? Who puts their wardrobe like that? Like I said before, they'll, they'll say and do a lot of things just to antagonize you know uh, a reaction out of a black man which will then give them the justification as to why it is that they are able to act like i said this is um 
you know it is crazy but you know hopefully with videos like this and many more you know other black people will start to really understand um the system and you know a lot of these things that transpire like i said i didn't write really you know it's just dab too deep um there were other things that i wanted to add to this but I, I pretty much feel like that the video itself along with some of the points that i was making in the video should uh suffice um you know when it comes to identifying and understanding um basically how we're seen and how they're seen but anyways let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that I stated in the comment description below and as always peace love and stay tuned for the next video